My name is Adam. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the extensive list of improvements and features that you can expect in ACDC Ultimate 2022, ACDC Professional 2022, and of course, ACDC Home 2022. I'll be showcasing the features using ACDC Ultimate. The blue icon at the bottom left will indicate that this feature is available in Ultimate, the red icon will indicate for Pro, and the yellow icon will indicate for Home. Because this edition contains a large amount of new features, this video will be a bit longer than our typical promo and tutorial content. I'll be timestamping the features in the description below so you can skip ahead to the feature that most interests you. Let's begin! People Mode People Mode is a brand new mode being introduced in 2022 that provides a one-stop shop to interact with all your face data. It was introduced so that users could name their subjects quickly and not one by one as only possible previously. To open the mode, click the People icon on the top menu bar. When you open the mode, you will see a preview window that allows you to toggle between named and unnamed faces. Your people will have numbers next to them that indicate how many photos there are of that person. If I click on a person, all their images will be visible. If for some reason a person on my list is incorrect, I can click the cancel icon on the top right to remove them. Below are suggestions. People mode will ask you to confirm or deny if a person is correct, and then the person will be filtered in with the others above. I can click on the Show Source button at the top to see the photo context. Note that the thumbnails are enlarged. I'll click back to return to my People roster. Note that you can click the tab up at the top to see your unnamed faces. I can name all the faces within the selected group from the top here, or name them individually from below. Returning once again to the People roster, you will see that my unnamed face is now named with the rest. Media Mode Media Mode is a database-driven view for accessing previously browsed folders in Manage Mode and cataloged folders. Navigate to Media Mode from the top right. Entering the mode, you can open a folder tree by clicking the icon on the bottom left. Navigate to the specific folder, or present all images in all subfolders by clicking on the All Media button. Within Media Mode, you can also view your images by double-clicking. Filter ACDC metadata, like labels and ratings, and sort by qualities like file size or date taken. SVG File Support ACDC can now display and open SVG files. I'll open one in view mode. Channel filtering. Many filters now contain a dropdown in edit mode that allow you to specify a channel range. I'll open the exposure filter and apply a contrast adjustment to the red channel from the dropdown. Notice the contrast differences in the sky in my image. Selection Basket Selection Basket is a new tool that offers a place to store multiple selections at the same time. In Edit Mode, I will open up Selection Basket from the Select drop-down menu. Let's create two different selections. I'll make a selection using the Brush Selection tool of the sky in my image. This will just take a moment. Once again, I'm just using the Brush Selection tool to do this. Once my selection is complete, I can click this icon here to add the selection to the basket. With my selection in the basket, I can also duplicate it using this icon here, delete it, set a selection if my selection is different or I have deselected. I can also transfer my selection to a mask. If I adjust my mask, for example, when I invert it, 
I can use the selection basket to add the new mask to the basket. Now that I have these two selections in my basket, I can add an exposure adjustment layer and use my selection basket to put the mask right on my exposure adjustment with the set selection mask button second on my list here. Channel selection. Much like in the exposure, lighting and detail filters, Edit mode now allows you to make a selection or mask from a specific channel. I'll navigate to Select and Channel Selection from the dropdown. A window will pop up that will allow me to define the channel. Here, I'll click Red from the RGB channel. I can add this channel directly to my selection basket, or I can set as a mask, or active selection. I'll set mine as an active selection. Note the active selection appears. From here, I can apply adjustment layers as I see fit. I'll add a clarity adjustment and change the values. Luminance Color Range New to 2022 is Luminance Color Range. It replaces pixel targeting. Open the tool by navigating in edit mode to select Luminance Color Range. Note that the tool offers dramatically more incremental control. I'll click the Luminance Range button from the top here to activate this control method. From here, I'll lower the luminance until the tree is almost entirely highlighted. Note that I can pull these lower wings here to avoid some of the darker blues in the sky. From here, we can click OK and make any adjustments that we like. For example, exposure. Color wheels in pixel targeting. Also within luminance and color range is the new color range method of selection. Once again, I'll activate the bottom color range section by clicking on this button here. From here, I'll use the wheel to select the green and yellow parts of the tree by rotating to the corresponding color. I'll also pull in the saturation slider so that we're just targeting the most saturated parts of my image. I don't want any of the sunset to be selected. To do this, I simply pull the center of the wheel towards the edge. I'll hit OK. And from here, we can simply make a quick hue change if we want to, to illustrate the selection. Pixel targeting in develop mode. Now, when you're making a brush or gradient selections in develop mode, you can further hone your selected area by applying the same luminance and color range criteria. I'll open an image in develop mode and make a brush selection over top of this building here. If I change the hue of this building by clicking on the color EQ slider, notice that the building next to it is also changing color. We can avoid this by using luminance and color range. I will click the target icon right here. I'll apply the color range criteria and make sure that my range is set to red so that the hue change avoids the yellow building next door. Squareness slider for radial gradients. Also new to develop mode is the squareness slider in radial gradients. I'll navigate to radial gradients within develop mode. The squareness slider is second from the top and allows us to turn our oval selections into square ones. Noise reduction in Develop Brush. You can now use the Develop Brush in the Detail panel to apply noise reduction. Simply click the Detail tab from within Develop Mode and use the Brush tool to make a selection. Here, I'll brush on a selection of the castle in the foreground. After my castle is selected, I'll increase the noise reduction until I can't see any of the bricks. Improved High ISO Support Images with exceptionally high ISOs above 200,000 are now supported in cameras by Canon, Nikon, Pentax, and Sony. 
You can find your ISO information under Properties Metadata in either the EXIF or the corresponding camera maker notes. Selection Preview button. Active selections can now be previewed by clicking this button beneath the preview window in edit mode. Note that the areas of your image that would be affected by an adjustment appear in white. Improved high dynamic range. We listen to your feedback. HDR now has a limit of 50 images up from 25 and has had a dramatic improvement to its functionality. Users should notice the difference right away. To combine images for an HDR image, simply select all the images in manage mode that you'd like to merge and navigate to process HDR from the drop-down menu. A preset menu will pop up that will ask you how you would like to output your image. Here's a before and after. Improved focus stacking. Also improved is focus stacking. The new focus stacking boasts much finer detail and less artifacts. To combine images for a focus stack, simply select all the images in manage mode that you would like to merge and navigate to process focus stack from the drop down menu. Here's another before and after. Improved noise reduction. Noise reduction in both develop and edit mode has an entirely new algorithm underneath the hood. New to the tool is tone and frequency range sliders for much better control of camera noise. Here I'm putting them to use to remove some noise from this image. Improved curve control. Tone curves in both adjustment layers and filters now sports a numerical indicator to see your adjustments as you raise and lower your curve. That represents the bulk of improvements in 2022. There will be a couple other smaller improvements and features, and they will be featured on the individual product pages. Stay tuned for more tutorial content as we approach the release date. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos. Take care.